So this contraption distills water, and distillation is the process of separating substances that have different boiling points. Now, tap water has some minerals in it, so it's a mixture of water and some minerals, and if you wanna get just water out, you have to boil it. And so the water is in this chamber, and then steam rises up through a central tube in here, and then it goes through this part, and it's slightly tilted, and uh, it's an inside tube, you can't see it here, but the inside tube is surrounded by uh, another tube of water, and that makes the steam that's going through the inside tube cool down, and then it condenses, and it will come out of this tube when it's operational. Yes, we have the water running constantly, so you can see. Right now what this is doing is actually filling up the tank on the inside a little bit. I can actually make sure it doesn't do that here. But the water continuously runs so that you can have this outside tube full of cold water and make the inside tube, uh, the steam in there, condense and it will come out of here. And we will run this contraption for a day or so so that we can get distilled water in here and distilled water is the water that has been uh, completely all the minerals in it have been completely removed the inside of this tank has a lot of minerals at the bottom and every so often should be cleaned out so that's distillation the process by which we separate material by the differences of their boiling points Chromatography separates mixtures based on the molecular polarity and the solubility of a substance. One of these ink lines is not soluble in water, and one of them is. And the dyes within the one that is soluble are, have different levels of solubility, and they have different levels of polarity. So let's see what happens when we put the very end of these in water and let the capillary action of the water move up through this filter paper. And we'll see which one of these is soluble. This contraption is a centrifuge, and a centrifuge separates particles based on their weights and sizes, and it spins around like this. You put a sample into this, and it spins around very quickly. So let's see how we would do this. Let's take a sample of our calcium carbonate and water, and we want to shove that down to the, it will be shoved down to the very tip of this tube. Let's see how we separate this. And here's some dirt and water. Put it in the centrifuge and we'll see how this works. Okay, let's take a look at our samples in the centrifuge and see what happened to them. So you can see all that calcium carbonate was shoved down to the bottom of the test tube. The dirt, not quite as much, probably needed more time. This is a Hoffman apparatus, and it's used to split water into its elements, oxygen and hydrogen, by the use of electricity. 
This is this process is called electrolysis. So let's take a look at how this works. Water with a small amount of acid is put into this tube and it runs down here and it splits off at this point and fills this both of these tubes up. Electrodes are attached to the bottom. These are platinum electrodes and then a wire of copper runs through and these electrodes are connected to a power supply. We're going to transfer electrical energy into chemical energy. Let's turn this on. And when we do, we'll notice at the electrodes, there are bubbles forming. These bubbles will travel up the tube to the top. And I've closed them off so that the gas is, is collected. I was running this earlier so we can go to the top of the tube and see how much gas is collected at each tube. In this tube, it's reached to this point, and in this tube to this point. Which gas do you think is in here? Which gas do you think is in here? Remember, both gases came from water. You can see that this one is about double this one. This is a chemical reaction because atoms are being split. So again, in the process of this electrolysis, electrical energy is being transferred to chemical energy.